in the NBA with the Utah Jazz season over. What can we expect during the offseason? Let's go ahead and take a second to do a little uh, retrospective review of the Utah Jazz this season. How do you think about the season? What do you think about the season? So to start this season, the Jazz were exactly what they thought they were going to be. They were right about 500. They were talented. They put a pretty good product on the floor. Um, at the trade deadline, obviously, we moved Kelly Olenek, um, Ochai Agbaji, um, Simone Fontecchio, all guys that were huge contributors to this Jazz team and their close to 500 success in the first part of the season. Um, after they move them away, I mean, if you're any kind of a Jazz fan, you're fully aware. It was very clear they were moving into, okay, let's try to get a draft pick this year. And the Jazz didn't look bad. I mean, we had a few games where Lori was on. Um, we had a few games where John Collins played really well. Uh, Jordan Clarkson's always is up and down. He's he's our constant roller coaster of a player. And then and then the tail end of the season kind of got here. You saw they're sitting every one of our starters. They're not going to risk any of those guys taking an injury that's going to cost them games. You know, you just kind of see in in some of the news that the the Jazz are looking towards this off season. They're looking to to clearly rebuild. I, I'm okay with it as a Jazz fan. It was it was tough to watch, but it kind of gives you a little bit of relief, right? You you know you're not you're you're turning it on just to watch the players rather than trying to watch and see these teams win. I don't know. What about you? What do you think? It's basically just a rinse and repeat of last year, man. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same thing. We got up to the trade deadline. We were playing about 50-50 ball. That was not good enough for Danny Ainge and Justin Zanuck, which, by the way, cover recover well, Zanuck, uh, on your kidney transplant. Absolutely. You know, we, uh, we here at the DNA, our thoughts are with you and your family, so recover quickly. Uh, but, yeah, so as far as the trade deadline and going, it's just rinse and repeat, man. Now, I, you know, I there's, there's a tale of two takes, man. You watch two teams that uh, emulate each other pretty well, and that's the San Antonio Spurs and the Utah Jazz. One play, one team is doing it right, the other team is not. Spoiler alert, it's not the Utah Jazz. Right. I've been on the camp that they should have tanked from day one last year, they should have tanked from day one this year, and they should tank again from day one next year. That's what this team should have done to put themselves in the best position for long-term competition. That's not what the Jazz have done, but we did the exact same thing last year that we did this year, which was we played decent ball, and instead of going in and trying to get some playoff experience for our young talent, yeah, we traded everything in the deadline, and we're just hoping that the ball bounces our way, and we're not going to lose our pick to the Timberwolves. Like That's what we're hoping on. We're just hoping on luck now and odds when we had the opportunity to guarantee that. I think that they're doing it wrong. I'm not happy with it. Uh, I'm not happy with it at all. You know, and I'm, This isn't a guy who's specifically going in after Victor Wimanyama. I thought it would be great if we had the opportunity to get that transcendent player. My rookie of the year started off as Chet Holgram, and I was – quite obviously in the right there but man Wemby's got a chip on his shoulder and he wants to win yeah he wants to dominate and I would see I would not be surprised if the San Antonio Spurs are close to competing next year for a playoff spot simply based I think Chet still world. probably wins rookie of the year I don't think he does no no not a chance Dude, had he played so good on the number one seeded yeah I think there is part of that where you, your yeah. team success plays into it but honestly the head-to-head -head matches between Victor and Wemby, uh, Victor Wembanyama and Chet Holgram, it wasn't even close the second time, man. Yeah, that's Wemby true. dominated, and if you look at the stats on the projections, it's not even close. It's Wemby all day long. Yeah, and yeah. his blocks are just ridiculous. Yeah, and the guy can literally like he just he got tired of the experiment of having a six-seven point guard, whatever his name is. They were trying to that uh, Coach Pop was trying to run out there to give a size thing, and once they switched that and gave it back to a traditional point guard, Wemby went off, man. And it was great to watch. It was fun basketball to watch. Um, on the other side here, we got the Utah Jazz, who have three young, talented players, where two of them spent a lot of time in the G League. Now, again, that was due to injury. They didn't you know, play in the summer league, and they right. didn't start off at camp. They were injured, so I'll give them some rest there. But you know, if this was the plan all along, then why didn't we push them to the – why did we even bother making – Yeah, why didn't we push this plan? This inability to pick a lane and stay with it that the Utah Jazz have right now is very, very frustrating. And that's what makes moving forward, moving forward in this season and the off season, even worse. Yeah. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about that. Let's talk about our speculation for the off season. Did you hear Danny Ainge's comments in the the star season? hunting comments? Yeah, the big game hunting comments. Yeah. Um, so, what do you think there? Do you what? Do you, what options do you have off the top of your head? Do you think they're going to go for? My problem is, is I don't know any of the players that are coming up in free agency. Like, I, I feel like there's not that. Like, this isn't a great free agent class this year.
also said in his comments there that we aren't going to have seven players on the roster that are under, under the age of 23. And, you know, if you draft three players this year and you keep all three, you will have over seven players on yeah. this roster that are under 23. So first off, let's take that. Do you think they keep them all? Do you think they trade them? What do you think they do? I think they're looking to move them. I think they saw enough from Taylor Hendricks and Keontae George and Bryce Sensabaugh that these guys are worth investing some time and money into. These guys probably have are roster locks at this point. I don't mm-hmm. see them moving them unless unless the stars align and they get something crazy, right? Uh, I, I can see them maybe potentially keeping that first round pick if they feel like they can get a player that's right in their wheelhouse. They really need shooting, in my opinion. They do not have any just knockdown three-point shooters. They, they need a really solid 3 and D player, and they just don't have one right now. Do they draft Peyton Clark? That, I mean, that would be fantastic, and I would take her. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> When it comes to the draft, I don't see a whole lot of shooting in this class that's coming up. I just don't see anybody who's really jumping out at me that's really kind of that elite player. The Jazz are going to fall. Typically, they're going to fall anywhere between 8. If it goes below 10, it's Timberwolves pick. So we got to make sure that we give it that 30% chance, 23% chance it'll be around the 8 we have about a 6% chance to get the overall first overall pick. We also have 20% chance that we fall. Let's talk about the veterans. Which are the, the veterans you plan on, on sticking around? Who's here and who's not? I think this is so dependent on, on what actually becomes available via trade, right? You know, we've got the core that we're going to keep around. We got Larry. Um, I think they're pretty, I think they're still pretty invested in Walker Kessler. I, I mean, I honestly still see Jordan Clarkson around one more year. I, I do not see the Jazz moving him especially if they're trying to win any ball games which according to them they plan to plan on so we'll see yeah and i think if you're trying to win ball games you need jordan clarkson obviously we've got Keontae, we've got taylor uh john collins i think is probably one piece they're willing to move on if they get any kind of traction on another player i think they've moved the john collins contract yeah I did. there is one that you missed that you think they keep on uh, which is Colin Sexton. I think they keep. Oh, Colin I think Sexton. they. I absolutely think they keep Colin Sexton. I think they keep yep. Colin Sexton. I don't think the Jazz have the chance to trade John Collins. His contract is too expensive. I don't think unless you pack a bunch of picks with that one, you're not moving that contract for. But I could see him packing a bunch of picks with it. Yeah, but then you're dumping. They it. Move it. They're but not I, using the picks the way they want to. Though I also think it depends on what they're getting in return, though. To move the John Collins contract and a couple of picks is worth it. If you get back Harrison Barnes, definitely showed out against the Golden State Warriors. I do think that with JC's comments that he made post game, uh, post game of the last game of the season, his kind of exit interview basically said, talked about all of his time with the Jazz in the past tense. I think he's going to want to trade. I think he wants out now. I think the way that the season ended up, I think he was going for it. But I would I would say if it wasn't for that post game, postseason interview where he was speaking about them in the past tense, I would say he is going to probably play out the last of his season. But he's been in trade rumors like for the last like five open windows of trades. His name has been in it. He has been moved. So I can see him either A, asking for a trade or B, going to get traded just simply because of the cal- the value of the contract. Now, again, He's only getting paid 13 million on that contract next year instead of the 20 whatever that he was been paying last year. Uh, so it is very a friendly tradable contract. So I do see him potentially not being around this year. Uh, Larry Markkinen, Walker Kessler, and Colin Sexton, I think, are, are going to be the the core there of the veterans that they keep. Yeah. And they're going to look to be renegotiating Larry's contract pretty soon, too. So they know they're going to have to pay that man. The Chaz got, dude, I am so glad I'm not Danny Ainge. Like they, the Jazz have so many moving pieces in this whole thing, mm-hmm. and, and really, what they need to decide is: Are we making a move to win ball games next year? Yes or no? Yeah. Well, you know what I mean. Like because the problem, because yeah. realistically, if you're just trying to, if you're still trying to gather assets, do that. I agree. I think the I think the Danny Ainge has a tough road ahead because you know with last season off season the Drew Holiday trade. Yeah. When uh, the Jazz made a play for him, the Portland Trailblazers actually liked Utah's package better than what Boston offered, but he didn't want to come here. Right. So he that's why he went to Boston. In this league of power and uh, player empowerment, where these players are basically saying, I don't want to go there. And so they don't I think it's going to be a tough road for the for, you know, Danny Ainge to to hope to get anybody, any star of relevance or any player of relevance that's going to get that's going to be here. Yeah. So I just don't see a whole lot of trade assets where people maybe Trey Young, maybe DeJounte Murray, they try to make the trade this season for him. I could see another push for Murray though. Yeah, but why would they do that if they're again, what is the goal? Like where are they trying to go? Exactly. You know, they can say to the press conference that they want to win games, that they want to improve. They're not going to tank for that scooter kid or whatever his name is. Scooter. What's his name? I like I like scooter. Um 
Cooper Flag. Six foot nine, elite rim protector, possesses great timing, defensive instincts, and awareness. Yeah. And going up against seven four women Yama or seven three Chet Holmgren. He ain't big enough. But anyway, uh, I just think that the Jazz really kind of, you know, you know what the bet on this one. There's two teams that are doing this run, and it's definitely not the Jazz. You don't wait to the trade deadline to see if you got a decent team before you go in or not. The moves need to be happening in the offseason. Yeah. If your plan is to compete, if your plan is to win games, then it should be a push for the playoffs or you shouldn't even try. No, I mean, I, I totally agree. Uh, that's exactly my whole thing is like, you decide whether you want to win games before the off season starts. Because if not, if you don't want to win games, that's fine. Jazz Nation understands. Keep the team together. Get these rookies some playing time. Try to find you a phenom, right? Take your draft pick, put them in the rotation and let that boy play. But if you want to win ball games, then start moving some pieces. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's get some players in here and let's get them on the floor together and let's let them compete and don't make all your, you know, like mid season trades again. Let's try to win ball games. Let's go to, let's go try to get experience. Let's get these guys the minutes that they need to be successful long-term and build a team now. Let us know in the comments down below, folks. Let us know what you think as far as the jazz this season. Give us what your review was of the Utah jazz this year. Yep. Um, also folks, we are on the grind to 1000 subscribers. We do have about 800 and plus right now. Once we hit a thousand, we're going to get the first $500 that we earn in AdSense revenue back to our subscribers. So if you are not subscribed yet, please make sure you do so hit that notification bell. So you don't miss out on that giveaway for sure. Yeah, make sure you guys, check out the merch should be a, a line down below there give it a look see if you like Hats, see if you like anything absolutely shirts go this way shirts yep. yeah different options down there for sure and if you guys are watched on youtube on one of our short videos this is available as a podcast uh, wherever you get your audio and there should be a link to this playlist right here with all that said folks my name is darren that is aj and this has been the dna sports recap till next time